all Speaking kind of, of stories, you a man of many stories. Yeah. And that's that's one of the things like I think a lot of people like about being around you is because you're like a community great storyteller. Yeah, you're great, you're, great you're, storyteller. You're, you're like the community storyteller. You've kind of been out on all the fringes and seen a little bit of everything. Can I can I can I can I, can I tell you something where I got my great storyteller from? Man? This is a true story, man. This is real shit. This is musical too. So my uncle Lionel Richie right. So I remember this man when I was younger, this motherfucker used to be telling stories, right? Lionel Richie. Lionel Richie. And I was a kid. legend. And my and little Nicole be with my mom and my aunt, because my aunt is my mom's so, so she be like, don't listen to that nigga, he lying. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and I be like, I just be like, did what he tell you. He be like, like and I be mesmerized. But I realized that's why he was such a great songwriter. Right. Because he could put that thing into a story. You know what I'm saying? Like, it stored them. But they were real. They were a story. And so I think a lot of things, when when he was doing stuff, his antics, the way he moved, like it kind of washed off on me over the time. Okay. Yeah. I got you. I got you. I got you. So are you, like, a big Lionel Richie fan? Definitely. Yeah. Shit, yeah. Is he, is he held in the highest esteem? One of the greatest uh, in your book? fucking devil. <laughs> Every single one of my albums, I definitely use a Lionel Richie song and a sample in it. Okay, okay. Well, what are your other, give me four or five other of your greats in terms of musical influences on your life? First, it would have to be, uh, one of my main would have to be Chuck D. So Public Enemy was my first, the backbone of my revolution. Me being a revolutionary when I was young. So I was on, I remember when I was at Camby Lane Elementary, it was me and my partner, Charlie. So, you know, back in the day, you used to have clubs in elementary school. Right. Where you make the little, the little papers thing, you have a badge. Nigga, our club was Public Enemy. I was Chuck D, he was Flavor Flay. <laughs> nigga, you couldn't be in the Public Enemy club, nigga. You, like, you had to have your shit together. Right. This Camby Lane Elementary, so that would be one. Of course, as I grew over the years, I'm gonna give you, my dad gave me one. Like one time I was younger and I was in my bedroom, my dad threw a tape on the on on the on the bed. I didn't even know who the fuck this nigga was, right? I'm gonna tell you the story. <laughs> he said, hey man, listen to this nigga. This this nigga got something to tell you right here. This motherfucker, he for real. Guess what it was? Tupac, Tupac. Okay. So okay. my dad introduced me to my dad introduced So your dad me. put you on a Tupac? Yeah. Okay, so uh, he was coming with the real end. Yeah. So like that shit come from somewhere. So then after that, I went through my foolish stage. I went, I got out to go with Wu Tang. I had my New York stage. So I wanted to be different in the in the and shit. Then I came back around as Player Fly and Triple C. And Tommy Wright. All right, and let's just pause right there because Memphis and Atlanta have a special relationship when it comes to music cultural exchange and um back in the 90s was really when it really became a real movement in terms of Memphis music coming to Atlanta and I know that you and everybody pretty much we grew up with you know was some of the first people on the east side to really be like the pioneers Jeff and, 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 and run with the torch of the genius and sound of Memphis, you know what I'm saying? And so, like, I mean, I think like what you did was like a self fulfilled prophecy. Like, I don't know how you end up doing what you did, but well, if you <laughs> want to know the, the Memphis connection, how the Memphis connection started with me, I tell you, from beginning to you know what I'm saying from the beginning. So at the time, my best friend, I was in, I was in high school. My best friend was Polo the Dog. So we had, you know what I'm saying, we used to do music in his mom's downstairs in the basement. Yeah, I remember y'all just coming through with Polo. Yeah, so at the time, Polo's brother and his sister, the Quay, it was Quay Bogo, he was popping, and his sister was Carisha, Riri. So they had a deal, and they, it was it was with these, these motherfuckers was really the biggest dope motherfuckers ever. They were called 40 Street Records, right? So at the time, I had a partner named Mike that used to always bring me three six out and shit from goddamn Memphis, right? So it was a girl on that bit on named Gangsta Boo, I actually like. So and Skinny Pimp. So we me and your brother grew up listening to Coops and then Skinny Pimp, all this shit. So we listened to these albums, right? They were tapes. 
So one white day, tapes. they were tapes clear with the white label. Yeah, the white tapes. Yeah. So what happened was this: I was already kind of mixed in music with Polo and that. So one day, as me and Polo riding in his mama camera, and and the Quay like, yeah, we got to go out here and uh, do this song with Skinny Pill. I'm like, Skinny Pill? <laughs> Skinny Pill Memphis? They like, yeah, I said, nigga, you got to take me to the studio. You got to take me to the studio, this underground motherfucker. All our friends did not fuck. We had a special clique that fucked with Memphis music. Niggas in Atlanta did not fuck with that shit. But took me to the studio to meet Skinny. I'm in that nigga. I'm talking shit to Skinny. Skinny like, nigga, these tastes are made it to Memphis? I said, yeah, nigga. I fuck with you. I'm a fan. And I said, this is right, some weird shit. So I was like, man, this is one girl. Gangsta boo, man. She da 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 da. I say, I fuck with her. She tight. I don't know what she look like. There wasn't no pictures of none of that shit. <laughs> He's like, man, I can call Lola right now. So he called up on the phone. Me and her get to talking on the phone. We exchange numbers. And that's how that relationship started with me and her. 